Hi all, welcome to the channel Cloud Knowledge. Today in this video we will study about the creation of self-hosted integration runtime in Azure Data Factory. So here on the page you can see the official documentation by Microsoft under the section Data Factory Documentation under Creation of Integration Runtime. How we have to create this self-hosted integration runtime. So first of all, we will see what is integration runtime. It is the compute infrastructure that ADF or Synapse pipelines use to provide data integration capabilities across different network environments. For more details, we can read through this hyperlink. And what is self-hosted integration runtime? It can run copy activities between a cloud data store and a data store in a private network. In ADF or Synapse pipelines, only copy activity supports SHI are and it helps in the data movement between the cloud store and any data store which is in a private network like your on-premise network. The installation needs on-premise machine on a virtual machine inside a private network. Next to the considerations, we have to consider these pointers before going for self-hosted IR. Then the command and the data flow is given. You can go through this. Prerequisites is important because it only supports these window versions 10 onwards then the server 16 19 22 here the operating system should be 64 bit and here in the prerequisites you can go through all in detail now next we have to focus on setting up of the self-hosted integration runtime so through azure powershell an example is given but we are going to study about setting up of the SHIR using Azure portal. So we'll go to the Azure portal, we'll create the integration runtime and follow the steps mentioned here from the official documentation. So let me take you to the Azure portal. Here we are. We are going to work in the data factory ADF cloud knowledge. So here on the left side, we have this manage section where we have integration runtimes at the left side under connection. So in the connection, if you have to create a new integration runtime, we'll click on the new button. It will open up at the right side, the integration runtime setup we have to select. So we'll select the first option, which is Azure or self-hosted. We'll select it at the bottom, a blue icon or a blue button will appear with the name as continue. We'll click on continue. It will open up the network environment options. First is Azure or self-hosted. In our case, we have to create self-hosted integration runtime so we'll select self-hosted again continue button will enable we'll click on continue now here <coughs> it will ask the name of the self-hosted integration runtime you write it as ck shir okay it validated the name this looks fine we'll click on create it successfully saved we can see after creation it shows the first tab as a settings tab where it is given in the first tab which is called the settings tab it has given us two options option one is express setup and the option two is manual setup the manual setup we are going to demonstrate in this video so in the option two we have to first download and install the integration runtime so we'll click on this button it will take you to another page for the download here from this microsoft.com download page, we have to download the IR. The IR related details are given here, the version of the IR, size, date published, and the download button. So we'll click on the download button. We'll select the latest IR MSI file and click on download. Let's wait for the download to complete. In the meantime, we'll go to the documentation and see the next steps. So here we are in the documentation. It says create self-hosted IR by the Azure portal or the user interface. The same steps we have used. We have gone to the integration runtime. We have clicked on the new button. We have selected self-hosted. Now the setup, it has asked for the two options, express or manual. We are going with the manual setup, okay? So it says copy and paste the authentication key, select download and install integration runtime download 
the runtime on a local Windows machine run the installer. So after running the installer, we'll see that we have to copy one of the keys which are provided there over here. Okay, and then click on register. Okay, on the register integration runtime page, we have to paste the key and select register. So let's go back. I think the download completed. Let's open the file, downloaded file. Here we are going to double click. It will open up the window installer page. You can see on the screen. It says, welcome to Microsoft Integration Runtime Setup Wizard. We have to click on the next button. Accept the license agreement. Click on next. Select the location. We'll leave it default. We'll go to next. And then the install button. Click on install. Now we have to wait patiently until the installation of the Microsoft Integration Runtime completes. Here on the screen, we can see that there is an alert which came, which says the computer is configured to enter into sleep or hibernate mode when not in use. The IR node cannot be used when the computer is in sleep or hibernate modes. So we have to change the settings in the power options in the control panel. So we'll click on OK and we have to change the power options. We'll go to the settings, choose what to do here and we'll do it to do nothing. And save the changes. I think this should help. We'll click on finish. And now the page appeared, which is present here on the tutorial documentation it's shown now here on the screen register integration runtime self-hosted and we have to paste the authentication key over here where we will get the authentication key from the Azure portal right so here we'll take the first key click on the copy to clipboard button right next to the key here and go to the IR configuration manager paste the key and click on register So it has registered, mentioned the IR node name and the list of integration runtime nodes, current node and the self-hosted node name. Now we'll click on finish. Okay. Now let's go back to the documentation. It says register finish. After the self-hosted integration runtime is sex uh, registered successfully, we have clicked finish. After SHIR is registered successfully, you'll see the following window. Okay, so we have seen this window. So it says this is green check marked and it says integration runtime has been registered successfully launch configuration manager. For us, it is also showing the same. So for us also now this has been registered successfully IR. And uh, this launch configuration manager button, we have to click next. Upon launching, you'll see self-hosted node is connected to the cloud service. The data factory name will be displayed through which we have connected integration runtime name, which we have given during creation was CKSHIR. No name, it will show up and then the data source credential. Okay, this looks fine. We'll minimize it. Now we'll go to the self-hosted integration runtime in the data factory. We'll click on the node section here. Currently, it is not refreshed. So we'll just close this tab and we can see here now CKSHIR status is running. And if we go again and click over here, go to the node section, we can see that the node name is displayed and its status is running. It will show us the IP address limit concurrent jobs okay so we have created self-hosted integration runtime using 
the manual setup by downloading the file and then following the next steps. Since we have already created a self-hosted IR, we'll quickly create a copy activity or a data flow pipeline to demonstrate how we have to use this SHIR. So we'll go to the author section. We'll click here on the plus sign and create a pipeline. Go to move and transform, take a copy data activity in the canvas and we'll probably name this pipeline as CKSHIR demonstration demo. Now what we'll do is we'll connect to the source. In our case, the source will be in order to demonstrate SHIR, we have to do on-premise to cloud data movement. Our source should be on-premise SQL Server. So here you can see in my SSMS, there is a localhost Microsoft SQL Server. The name is localhost MS SQL Server 02. And we have a table inside this master database inside this server, which we are going to import into the Azure Cloud using copy activity. So let me just go and create a source data set. The source data set will be SQL Server. It has to be on premise. So we have selected SQL Server. Click on continue. We'll create a new link service. Let's click on new. Here we are going to connect to that on premise SQL Server using SHIR, which we have created as CK SHIR. Here we have to select the integration runtime. This is important. Then the server name. It is local host backslash MS SQL server 02. The database name is master SQL authentication. We have a user inside this database. So if you go to the SQL server inside the security section of it, we have a login with the name uh, CK user. So if you don't have user, create one. Use the credential which you have given for this user. And next, we'll test the connection. So we are connecting to the database using SHIR. Connection failed. Let's click on more. It says cannot connect. Please contact this server. Check link service configuration is correct. Let me close this and here we'll go down and encryption will make it optional and just check again. This time it is connected successfully. We'll click on create button. We'll click on OK. We'll open. We'll open the source data set. So here in the SQL Server connection, we have to select the table. In the table drop down, we'll select dbo.test. We'll go back to the pipeline. We'll go to the sync and in sync, we have to get this loaded to Azure Data Lake Storage Gento account. So we'll select ADLS Gento, delimit text, select the link service for the ADLS Gento. Now browse to the file path, which is the input folder. Click OK and OK again. Now we'll open the sync data set and here We'll give the file name as test.csv, which is to be created. And then we'll go again back to the pipeline, validate the pipeline, publish the changes to the ADF. After publishing complete, we'll perform a debug run. So let's click on debug and wait for the pipeline to complete. Here we can see it's queued up in progress. So the pipeline completed in 25 seconds. Now we can go to the storage account here. This is a storage account which we have given. And the folder selected was the input folder. We'll go to the input container and search for the test.csv file generated today. So it's the file here. Click on edit and preview. The data landed from the test table, which is present in the master database 
of the MS SQL Server on-premise. Same data with ID and name and two rows have been moved with the help of SHIR in ADF to Azure Cloud from on-premise SQL Server. So this is how we make use of the SHIR integration runtime okay, for the data movement. I, I hope you've understood this video. Do let me know in comments if you have any queries. Thank you for watching the video. Happy learning. Bye.